today on Destination Polaris. We pack up. All that good on the top. And head for Washington State on an overlanding adventure. Where we camp. Sub-zero, I hope it's not that cold tonight. And uncover a Chinese secret. China wall. What's this about? Destination Polaris starts right now. Destination Polaris is presented by Rugged Radios, the authority in communications. Welcome to Destination Polaris. We are in Washington State on the eastern edge of the Cascades. For the next three days, we're gonna go on an overlanding adventure. We got the machines, we got the gear. Let's do this. It's been years since we made a trip to Washington, so we decided to go big and turn this ride into our first overlanding adventure. We set up base camp for the week in the town of Conconali, located four plus hours northwest of Seattle and a stone's throw from the Canadian border. Locals refer to the town as Conk, And I've deliberately pronounced it five different ways just to confuse you guys, but it is Conconoli. Washington local Ian Blomgren spends his free time riding in the Cascades and will be our guide for the week. My overland beard is uh, pretty epic. While Ian leads, his buddy Rich will make sure we don't fall too far behind. How I pronounce it is Conconelli. Um, quite often we'll just call it Conk because we really don't know if it's Conconnelly, Conconnelly, but so conk it is for us, so. Hey Ian, Rich pronounced it differently. Did he? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. The two caught the overlanding bug a few years ago and now spend lots of nights camping on the trail. Somewhere between 20 and 30. Ian packs light, brings only what he needs. Yeah, I, I go very minimal. So if I can't wear it, drink it, eat it, or sleep in it, I'm, or recover myself with it, I'm gonna be pretty critical about whether or not I'm gonna put it on there. His plan is for our group to leave from Conk and head north towards the border. We're going to explore all over the northern section of the Washington backcountry discovery route, all the way up to Canada. So now you know where we're going and who we're hanging out with, but what to bring on an overlanding trip? Well, that's where these guys come in. RBO stands for Razorback Off-Road. Chuck Ciccarelli owns Razorback Off-Road. They design and manufacture all sorts of cool overlanding gear. This is our GP rack, which stands for general purpose. This one is really made for overlanding, kind of that off-road adventure that wants to take everything. Our tool mounts go on, our spare tire mounts. Everything is interchangeable on the racks. Just really designed just to get out and enjoy life and be adventurous. We like to say that an organized machine is an efficient machine. Chuck, I'm pumped because you're going to carry all of our stuff. Are we ready to load this thing? All right, Benjamin, bring me the camp stove first. That yellow bag right there. You can pitch them up to me, I think, son. That's a pretty good load right there on the top. Now I need a moment just to strap everything down. Yeah, and there's no wrong way to do it at all. If there's one thing I could impress upon people is the more that you go out and do it, the more you're gonna know what you wanna pack. And maybe your loadout gets bigger, maybe it gets smaller. Either way, I think we're loaded up and ready to go. will take us along the northern section of the BDR. Backcountry discovery route. It's basically a trail system that runs 
north to south. It kind of meanders through uh, Washington. I couldn't tell you exactly how many are developed, but pretty much every state in the west is developed. Uh, California, Idaho, Washington, Oregon has one as well. In the state of Washington, you're talking hundreds of miles of trails. Here I did hear at one point somebody made reference to how many miles it was. It's going to be hard for me to quote, but if somebody told me it's 700 to 1,000 miles of usable trails out here, I would absolutely believe it. And a lot of them connect. So it's a great play area. It's, it's safe. You know, most of them are Forest Service trails. They're relatively well maintained, but as you know, we found out there are some trails that are a little bit more technical and give the guys that like to wheel an opportunity to have some fun as well. Uh, if people wanted to find a resource on it, they go to ridebdr.com and you can find any inf all the information. You can order the maps, the whole ball of wax. There are six sections on the Washington BDR, and we plan to ride five and six all the way to the Canadian border. It is very remote. It's, we're we're kind of in, we're in an area where guys like to hunt and like to snowmobile during certain parts of the year. But before we set up camp for the night, we plan to get a little funky. Okay, coming up next, we're gonna take you to the funkiest view of the Eastern Cascades, you're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is sponsored by Rugged Radios, the authority in communications. Rockford Fosgate, purpose built audio. Full throttle battery, the one that works. And by Super ATV, the leader in aftermarket parts and accessories. Welcome back to Destination Polaris. We're on an overlanding adventure in Washington State, headed for the Canadian border. Our ride will take us over and through the Eastern Cascades. You're gonna see everything from burnt forest to the Cascades. There's some vantage points that open up where you can really see some of the taller peaks on the Cascades as you look to the west. As you go to the north, you're gonna find some lakes. And if you're paying close attention, when you get up to some altitudes, you'll see some alpine lakes as well. We're in my backyard. I was born and raised in the Pacific Northwest. Ian Blomgren spends countless hours riding these trails these machines really allow for going out and seeing some things that normally would be very, very remote and hard to get to. He's our guide for the next few days and will take us to some of his favorite spots. For me, it's getting out, seeing things I've never seen before, and then as of late, taking other people out that have never seen the things that I've seen. First stop on our journey, Funk Mountain. That was a pr pretty good trail ride. I mean, I don't think that I would call that a entry level trail ride, getting up in there, picking your way up through some of that. So Ian, as I understand it, you're about to show me the funk. I'm gonna show you the funk. Yeah. Hope you like heights. <laughs> funk Mountain Fire Lookout Tower? Yeah, yeah. It's not sketchy at all. You got lucky though, no wind. Established in 1956, this fire tower overlooks the Cascades. You first, sir. Baby steps. I'm not going. Did I just hear I'm not going? <laughs> I don't know who sets up these trips where I gotta climb in fire towers all the time. I believe it's Jerry. Yeah, I believe it's me actually, so no one to blame but myself. Like an old school tree house. That's what this feels like. Made it. What range are we looking at right here? Uh, we're on the eastern part of the Cascade Mountain Range. By far, the most enjoyable was going up to the first lookout. On a good day, you get up there and it's just breathtaking. You know, the, the sights, 
the sights are just un unreal. Seattle is southwest from here, but we're headed north towards Canada, where we'll camp for the night. Along the ride, we stick to the BDR. I want to say we're somewhere between section five and six right now. I'd have to actually reference the map. The toughest thing that people are going to find out about trying to tackle these BDRs is logistics. No doubt. What we thought was going to be a fairly short ride turned out to be much longer. We got to camp just before dark. All right, start handing me some goodies. All right, here we go. Somebody's poofy little blanket. Yeah, there's a little pillow. It's cute. It's cute. <laughs> what would we have done without your big uh, giant uh, rack here there? Chuck? Yeah. Right? It's amazing how much stuff you can get in here. Yep. We got sleeping bags. We got tents. Can't go anywhere without the chair. Sub zero. I hope it's not that cold tonight. And then we got to get that RBO hammer. I have taken this tent with me all over the world. This tent has been to Indonesia, China, Africa, and now it's been to Washington. It's done. <laughs> I'm an expert here, trust me, I know what I'm doing. It may not look like it at the moment, but I promise you. We have not done a camping trip on Destination Polaris in forever. So it's kind of cool that we're doing one. We've done camping trips in Idaho. We did one in California. The tent is almost ready to go. My tent is done. Is dinner ready? Yeah. yeah. He just says, ha. He's over there bragging about how good dinner's going to be. It better be. Voila. Hold on. Boom. Home sweet home. Home sweet home, he says. So the plan is we're all going to camp out here tonight. Everyone brought tents. Chuck's going to make dinner. Got here a lot later than we planned. It's already dark, so hopefully we get everything taken care of pretty soon. Stay the night and then head out for a new adventure tomorrow. But first, dinner. Do you like yours well done or not? That's delicious for me right there. So that does it for night number one. When we come back, we visit one of the oldest silver mines in the state. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is sponsored by Walton's, everything but the meat. Aluma Trailers, Aluma Adventure, take fun anywhere. Razorback Off-Road, hardcore products for your side-by-side. -side. And by Shock Therapy, the premier UTV suspension tuning company. Welcome back to Destination Breakfast. We survived night number one out here. We're gonna pack up, head back out on the BDR here pretty soon, but first things first, breakfast burritos. Nice job on the burritos, Chuck. Thanks for cooking all week. Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. Yeah, he's fed us all week. <laughs> <laughs> what makes this trip even better for Chuck, his son Ben, came along for the ride. Me and my dad are very close. Now, as we get older and progressing, it's nice to be able to do this together. I just can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing right now. We're just having a great time. Our ride took us to the edge of the Canadian border. Now we're headed back towards Conk and one final destination. This is my first time up here and then this close to Canada riding. This is pretty crazy.
I think people are starting to catch on that you can do them in these machines, and they're real practical. Coming up here this this high up, being in the you know a little cooler weather, um, having all the trees is really quite wonderful. Halfway back to town, we pulled over for a quick lunch break. We always pick the uh, worst spots for lunch. You're gonna eat all the cookies. If you weren't guiding the trip, I would think otherwise. But since you're guiding the trip, I can have all the cookies. Well, now that I got the green light. Tip your tour guide, is that what the deal is? <laughs> <laughs> Get in there, Rich. A short stop and we're back on the trail headed for camp spot number two. You wanna set the tent up first or unload yeah. everything? Let's kinda groom this up and make it kinda flat. Bows in first, right? I like to lay it down till we get the other one in. We gotta go a little more your way. All right. Yeah. This is the door. favorite cook stove. I don't know if they even make them anymore. Okay, here we go. We have fire. Ben, I'd like you to help me package the Pop-Tarts for tomorrow. Mama Chicorelli's chocolate chip cookies. So um, I had some hid, but everybody demanded more, so I had to dig them out. Tonight we're gonna have a pretty easy dinner. Cook some hot dogs and some bratwurst. Look at that, just like a surgeon lays out his tools. Gotta get the man in black out to help out every once in a while. I've uh, had this knife for so many years. You want brat or beef? Brat. Let's go one each till we get through it because I may run out. Brat or beef? Yes, please. Brat or beef? I'll go beef. And we need all these beans eaten. Can you take a little more? The question is, do ballpark franks plump when you cook them? And the answer is yes. Getting a nice little char on, it's good. A warm fire and plenty of stars. Stick around as we take a trip back in time. When we finally found it, it was like, wow, this is great. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is sponsored by RZ Mask. Get 99.9% .9 filtration from dust and dirt. Flow fast. Riders need to flow fast. Polaris Adventures. Adventure everywhere and by switch pros programmable switch panel power systems welcome back to dp any good overlanding trip should start with pop tarts there we go how many minutes each side chuck it's your call. Okay. They're pretty thin with one thin foil. Campfire Pop Tarts. Perfect. Champion. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it's our last morning on the trail before we head home. Oh, it's a great trip. Totally agree. And we couldn't leave without finding a bit of history. Tucked back on a trail about half an hour from Conk is a place called China Wall. It 
was here in 1889. The Arlington Mining Company constructed these walls to serve as the foundation for a silver mine. China Wall was a really cool experience, you know, seeing the craftsmanship in the wall and everything like that was really nice. The craftsmanship just is amazing. It's kind of like a concrete. But I was just in awe looking at all those rocks, imagining that every one of those had been touched by human hands, you know, all in the quest of silver. It's like they made little fortresses. kind of sit back, you, you look at it, and just kind of visualize what times were like. I mean, look at this wall, how straight it is. It's really big, you know, I sit next to it, it's about 25 feet high, <laughs> um, and then just goes up and up. It's just kind of surreal, you know, it's quiet. It's kind of nestled just off the road, so you can just blink and miss it. But uh, it's a nice spot to visit. You can tell there's a lot of thought put into it, and then also just a ton of skill. I, I'm just marveled at the craftsmanship because every stone was picked up by hand, every single one of them. Right there. <laughs> there, I did my contribution. Well, we survived our first overlanding adventure. I'm sure it won't be our last. I gotta tell you, I get a little nervous bringing people out to see some of my, you know, some of the stuff that I go out and see. I always gauge people's reaction. I've been pleasantly surprised. go in and a, and a meadow opens up and I look at you guys as reaction to that and I, it's, it's, it's been awesome. It seems like you guys have enjoyed it and that's that's what I'm that's what I'm here for.